Hey, GED students, first step here is not to freak out. This is easier than it looks. Let's go ahead and read it. Solve the equation 2 equals xy for y. Then determine which of the following values of x would make the solution undefined in the real numbers. Choose all that apply. So there I go again, like I like to do in advanced level practice, combining actually two GED problems into one. You won't see this exact thing on the GED, but you'll see the two parts of it perhaps separately. So let's look at the first thing they ask you to do. First thing they ask you to do is solve the equation two equals x, y, four, y. And so this skill, solving equations that have more than one letters, can appear on both the math and the science test. Um, I think these are called literal equations. But when you have more than one letter, like here I have an X and a Y, they're going to need to designate which letter they want you to solve for. So you can see they say solve for Y. That means that's what I want to be alone. I want Y to be by itself so I can know what Y is. And you might say to yourself, well, how am I supposed to do that when I don't know what X is? No, you don't know what X is, but you know two things. It is a number. It's some unknown number. A, and B, you know what it's doing with Y. That's all you need to know to get rid of it. You don't have to know what it's equal to. You have to know what it's doing. You have to understand the operation here. So take a look at how X and Y are shoved together. You see that? That means they're multiplying. So if I want to get rid of that thing that's multiplying with Y, what I need to do is the opposite of multiplying. And what's the opposite of multiplying? Why, it's dividing, I hope you know. So that means I'm gonna divide. And you're like, what am I gonna divide by? I'm gonna divide by what I wanna get rid of, guys. If I want Y alone, then I need to get X to go away. So I will divide away that X. You say, can I do that? I say, you sure can. You can do whatever you want as long as you do the exact same thing to the other side. So we're gonna see same operation, same number over there. You're like, X is not a number. It is, guys, it is. It's a mystery number, but it's a number, okay? And so now, well, what do we do? Well, it's interesting because this problem's actually easier than a lot of the problems you do if you don't panic you say well look at the left hand side kate i don't know how to divide two by x and i say well neither do i because i don't know what x is so do you know what a mathematician does when they don't know how to do something they just write it down what is two divided by x um it's two over x i don't <laughs> there's no simpler this can get if i don't know what x is and then you say well what about that right hand side that looks ugly well remember a multiplying and dividing by x are opposites those things are gone like it's all gone all that's left is y and i've done exactly what i wanted here now this is a correct answer down here don't get me wrong but usually how we write it is we write it with the isolated variable the letter that's alone first and then the solution on the other side. So I'm gonna write it that way. I think it makes students more comfortable, but that here is the solution, it's solved. You say, what is Y? I say, I don't know, but whatever it is to find it, you take two and you divide by some, this number X, whatever it is. Boom, solution, Y is alone. Okay, so I did the first step, and like I said, that skill right there of solving, moving around when there's letters that you need to get rid of, that can happen on math or science. Now, let's look at the second thing they ask us to do. It says, then determine which of the following values of X would make the solution undefined in the real numbers. They love questions about undefined expressions in the non-calculator section of the GED. Now, the if the first problem would have come up, you would have had a calculator, not that it helped you any, but this second part, you wouldn't have a calculator, so we're not gonna use one either, okay? So I'm looking for something that makes this sucker undefined. Now, remember what undefined means. Undefined means like it doesn't work, it's broken, like no answer, no possible way to think about this. So if you look at this, and you might say to me, Kate, I thought you said it was an undefined expression and this is not an expression, this is an equation. No, but the solution, the solution, just this part, the solution, what y is equal to, that is an expression. So what I'm asking you here is, is there a number that if x were that number, this 
expression would make no sense. This expression wouldn't actually exist as a real number. And yeah, there is, we were supposed to know, and here's the thing you need to actually have memorized for that non-calculator section that you need to understand about fractions. And that is we're not allowed to divide by zero. You can't divide by zero. Try it in your calculator. You know, it won't let you divide by zero. It'll say error, error, error. And you say, Kate, that's not divide. That's a fraction. And I say, did you forget already that a fraction bar means the same as divide? I can't divide by zero. That means the bottom, the bottom, the denominator of my fraction cannot equal zero. Well, what's down on the denominator of my fraction? Just X. So guess what X can't be? X cannot equal zero. Now there's some more complex problems on the GED where it's not just an X down there and we need to do some more work than that. But for this one, super simple. It's just X down there. So if X were to turn into zero, this whole thing would be nonsense undefined. And so what would make this undefined in the real numbers if X were zero? Woo, woo, woo. Hey, two GED problems at once. Nice job, guys. Proud of you.